Hello everyone, I am Assistant Professor Urmi Shah from IT ICT Department of LG Institute of Engineering and Technology. So up till now we have covered our 5 modules of analog and digital communication subject. The modules which we have deal right now is chapter number 6 that is Pulse Modulation Technique. Up till now we have studied it, introduction to communication system, noise analysis for the communication system, then we have learned the amplitude modulation chapter, then we have seen the angle modulation technique that is frequency modulation and phase modulation. In the fifth chapter we have done the analysis of radio transmitters and receivers which are involved in radio communication. And moving ahead, in chapter number 6, we will be looking upon to the digital modulation concept that is pulse modulation. Up till now, whatever we have seen was dealing with analog modulation. The first 5 units were dealing with the analog communication or modulation scheme. From now, we will be moving towards the digital communication era in our communication subject so that will include first topic related to pulse modulation technique so let's understand today what is digital communication how analog communication is converted to digital communication in today's era and how the modulation schemes differ from analog communication in digital communication world so let's start with this unit that is chapter number 6. Following are the topics which we are going to cover in today's session. First topic we, we are going to cover is pulse code modulation. Secondly we are going to see is advantages of digital communication over analog communication. Secondly we are going to see is typical pulse code modulation based communication system and finally we will be looking upon analog to digital conversion process so these are the topics for this session which we are going to discuss let's start with the session so first topic is pulse code modulation so up till now whatever input signal or message signal which we were passing from transmitter section to receiver section everywhere the waveform was continuous or it was in form of analog nature that is shown over here but now moving ahead now we need to convert it in form of discretization that is at every time interval we need to have some pulses in form of signal so as you can see over here first done is the pulse amplitude modulation secondly it is done in form of pulse width modulation then it is done in form of pulse position modulation and finally it has been coded in form of pulse code modulation so all these modulation techniques we are going to study in this module while moving ahead we will learn each and every technique which is shown over here that is PAM pulse amplitude modulation PWM that is pulse width modulation PPM that is pulse position modulation and PCM which is the most important one while we are dealing with digital communication that is pulse core modulation so let's move ahead nextly we will be discussing what are the advantages of digital and analog communication basically why we are preferring digital rather than having the analog communication digital is more robust than analog to noise and interference Noise and interference are the very important parameters right now in any communication system which can distort, disturb or interfere any communication process. 
So digital communication is very very stringent or robust towards noise and interference signal which is a very good quality whenever we are choosing digital over analog. So this is one of the most important advantage. Then digital is more viable using regenerative repeaters. Now what does this term mean? Regenerative repeaters. Regenerative means it can generate multiple times. Only once generation is not enough. Repeaters means once the signal has been generated, if it is not enough, then it will repeat the signal again. Those sections are known as repeaters. If I am having a transmitter section and a receiver section, in between I have kept one buffer for transmitting this uh, signal towards receiver. Then I can keep multiple buffers such that it can transmit it to receiver if my communication is long way. So what are those buffers? Buffers are going to generate the same signal again and again. What is given as an input, it will generate as an output. So those long chain buffer section is nothing but my repeater section which is going to repeat the input which was transmitted as an output. So those are the advantages in digital communication section. Then digital hardware is more flexible by using microprocessors and PLSI. So it is more flexible towards the recent hardware technology. Then digital signal storage is easier and cheaper and it is more efficient. So anything which is cost effective is best selling our market. So this is again a very good advantage of digital communication. Nextly, digital communication can be coded to yield extremely low error rates with error correction. So again, error is the main motive over here. Then Easier to multiply several digital signals than analog signal. At a time we can send multiple signals in digital form. Otherwise in analog we have some limitations. So multiplexing concept is again an advantage in digital communication. Digital is more efficient in trading of SNR for bandwidth. Trading of SNR means nothing but the signal to noise ratio. How much signal we are able to reproduce by avoiding the noise or by reducing the noise. That is our SNR ratio. Then digital signals are easily encrypted for security purposes. Now whenever we are performing transmissions of signal for long distances in some secret missions of wars or military purposes or army purposes at that time we use digital communication because it is secure enough such that it will keep the information secure otherwise it will be leaked out if we are going towards analog communication so encryption is again a very important topic whenever we are dealing with the advanced communication applications. So that can be achieved using digital communication. Moving ahead, nextly, reproduction of digital data is more reliable without deterioration. Deterioration means without any disturbance or without any false impact. Then cost is coming down in digital system faster than in analog system and DSP algorithms are growing in power and flexibility. Analog signals may vary continuously and their value is affected by all levels of noise. So these are the advantages of digital over analog communication. So nextly, digital is more robust than analog to noise and interference and Digital is viable to regenerative repeaters and its hardware is also flexible using microprocessors and DLSI. Now, for the typical PCM communication system, this is the flow or this is the block diagram we can see. Firstly, 
it will have source of continuous time or message signal then it will be passed on to low pass filter that is our lpf low pass filter is going to pass on the low frequency ranges to the sampler circuit sampler circuit is going to convert the analog continuous signal in form of samples or it is going to discretize our signal then it will be further passed on to the quantizer section quantizer that we are going to see in the upcoming session it is a very important role in digital communication system to quantize a signal then it will be passed on to the encoder section encoder section is going to perform code form of the discretized signal then the pcm signal is going to be applied to the communication channel input from there this whatever discussed is the transmitter section of digital communication from there it will be passed on to regenerative repeater section and that regenerative repeater section is going to regenerate the pcm signal which can be further applied to the receiver section now these are the components or the blocks which are involved in the receiver section that is final channel output will be given to the regeneration circuit it will further process it to the decoder circuit then decoder is going to have a reconstruction filter which is going to reconstruct the original message signal and finally it will be received at the destination so this way the whole digital communication or pcm which we called as pulse code modulation communication system works this is the flow diagram of how the signal will be transmitted and it will be received at different levels of communication that is transmitter transmission path and receiver moving ahead the analog to digital conversion process now basically why we are doing analog to digital conversion it is a three step process whenever we are performing modulation for digital communication we require signal in form of digital samples right now i am speaking but you won't be able to have the digital samples of what i am speaking or what is the audio source so that is a continuous signal we need to convert it in form of digital samples so that it can be processed for digital communication purpose so for that we require analog signal input to be converted in digital signal input form so for that we require a to d converter that is adc process analog to digital conversion process so this is the reason why we are studying this adc and why we are using it in our digital communication process firstly the signal is going to be entered in form of analog signal it will enter in the sampler section sampler section is going to have perform sampling process of the analog signal it will capture the sample data values and process it to the quantizer secondly in the quantizer section it will quantize the digital samples which are process or quantize in form of sample data then it will pass it on to the encoder section it will perform the coding form encoding form of the quantized data which is entered in the encoder section and it will produce the encoded digital output this way how the three blocks are required for converting analog to digital signal sampler quantizer and encoder analog signal is going to be transmitted via sampler to quantizer to encoder to make it convert in form of digital signal so discrete time is going to correspond in terms of timing of sampling this way how the a to d conversion process will be done so basically pulse code modulation will have the output as in form of digital codes that is 1010 
pulse code modulation is used digitally to represent sampled analog signal. It is a standard form of digital audio in computer series, digital telephony and digital radio applications and the samples each which are quantized are nearest value within the predetermined range of digital levels. This way how the encoding is done. Following are the references for the topics which we have discussed today. Now we are dealing with the digital communication part. So you can refer Simon Hiking for digital communication or one of the book which is not included over here is digital communication by Proekis. You can refer the references for the topics which we have discussed today. Thank you so much for watching this session. Thank you very much.